Alright guys, now for an explanation of aerobic cellular respiration. So we've already done glycolysis and again if you haven't um, watched the glycolysis video you should go back and watch that first. So um, once you finish glycolysis you've got the question, then what? So if there is no electron chain available or if for some reason the cell can't access the electron transport chain, then fermentation will occur and that happens out in the cytoplasm. If an electron transport chain is, av is available, then pyruvate enters the mitochondrion and respiration will happen. So respiration will happen if the electron transport chain is available and that's going to happen inside the mitochondrion. So this type of terminal electron transport or ter terminal electron acceptor in the electron transport chain, it determines what type of respiration is happening. So based on what your terminal electron transport acceptor is, um, or the final thing in your electron transport chain, that determines what kind of respiration you're going to have. If the terminal electron acceptor, if the last electron acceptor, is oxygen, we call that aerobic respiration. Aerobic means with oxygen. So that's aerobic respiration if we're using oxygen to accept the last electrons in our um, electron transport chain. Um, if your terminal electron acceptor is not oxygen, then we call that anaerobic respiration. So you can have respiration without oxygen, it's just not called aerobic respiration, it's called anaerobic respiration. So following glycolysis, aerobic cell respiration will take place in the mitochondrion. So we have our um, glucose, it's broken down to pyruvate, and this process right here is glycolysis, we're making our pyruvate. Okay, if we don't have our electron transport chain, we go through fermentation and we make some sort of waste product like ethanol um, or lactose, lactic acid. Sorry, they should say lactic acid. Um, and then um, if we do have an electron transport chain available, we'll take that pyruvate. Instead of going through fermentation, we'll enter the mitochondrion and go through a couple steps um, to get some more ATP. So the products of glycolysis are transported through the mitochondrial membranes into the matrix. This is where the citric acid cycle occurs. So we're going to take pyruvate. Um, change it into something called acetyl-CoA, and we'll get to that in our next slide. Um, then we go through the citric acid cycle, um, and then we go through something called oxidative phosphorylation, and that all happens in our mitochondria. Now, prokaryotes do not have mitochondria, um, chloroplasts, or other membrane-bound organelles, um, so, but they can perform respiration. So prokaryotes that perform respiration do not have mitochondria, but instead they use specialized portions of their cell membrane to do this. So they can have a folded outer membrane and use that folded outer membrane to uh, perform cell respiration. Now our first step in cell respiration is going to take, be to take those products of glycolysis, our pyruvate, and turn them into um, acetyl-CoA. So our first step is to make acetyl-CoA. So while being transported into the mitochondrion, pyruvate, which is a three carbon sugar, it loses a carbon and is converted into an acetyl group. So we're taking a, one of the carbons from our three carbon pyruvate, we're losing that, and we lose that as carbon dioxide. The other two, okay, they're still linked together, are called an acetyl group. That's CH2, CH3. Um, and the carbon that's lost, like I said, is lost in the form of carbon dioxide. Okay? So we're taking our pyruvate, okay, and we're going to lose um, one carbon attached to two oxygens. So this is the portion of the pyruvate we're going to lose. So we're going to enter the um, mitochondrion, we're going to lose that as our carbon dioxide. The rest of it, the other two carbons that are left over from the pyruvate, are going to be turned into an acetyl group. Okay? Now the acetyl group is then attached to a molecule of coenzyme A. So we've got our acetyl group here, and then coenzyme A comes in and attaches to it. Okay? And that forms something called acetyl-CoA, or acetyl group plus coenzyme A. And that feeds the acetyl groups into the citric acid cycle. So coenzyme A is like a carrier, and it carries um, acetyl groups into our next step, which we'll see on our next slide, um, the citric acid cycle. Now during this process of making acetyl-CoA, so when we have... Um, we lose our carbon dioxide and we add everything else to coenzyme A. During that process, another NAD gains an electron and is reduced into NADH. So our NAD is gaining an electron. Remember, um, reduction is gaining. So we're reducing our NAD into um, NADH. Okay, so NAD is adding an electron to become NADH. All right, so our inputs um, when we make acetyl-CoA, we're taking our one pyruvate. And remember, we're going to do this two times because we get two pyruvates from uh, one glucose molecule. So we have one pyruvate, um, which is a three-carbon sugar, and two NADs, okay? And then our output is one acetyl-CoA, one carbon dioxide, and one NADH. And this all is going to happen twice since we're using, um, getting two pyruvates from one uh, glucose molecule.
All right, our second step is going to be to enter the citric acid cycle. Remember, coenzyme A is going to carry our acetyl groups to deliver them into our citric acid cycle. So what happens? Our acetyl groups are carried into the cycle as acetyl-CoA. Then CoA, our coenzyme A, is going to leave. So coenzyme um, A drops off the acetyl group into the citric acid cycle. Our acetyl group is then attached to something called oxaloacetate. Okay, so our acetyl group is added to oxaloacetate, forming something called citric acid. And citric acid is also known as citrate. Okay, so our acetyl group is added to oxaloacetate, forming citric acid. Now, there's two carbons in that acetyl group. Okay, those two carbons are oxidized. Okay, um, into and remember, oxidation means we're losing electrons. Those two carbons are oxidized into two carbon dioxides. Okay, we also take three molecules of NAD and we reduce them into NADH, so we're adding electrons to them. Um, and then we have one molecule of FAD is re reduced into FADH2. One ATP is produced, and then citrate is going to be converted back into oxaloacetate because we're losing um, the carbons from the oxaloacetate as carbon dioxide. Um, and let's take a look at this, okay? We're taking our acetyl-CoA, it drops off our um, acetyl group into the citric acid cycle. So our coenzyme A leaves and our two carbons from our acetyl group enter the citric acid cycle. They bind to oxaloacetate and form citrate, and then we're going to lose two of those carbons as carbon dioxide, because each carbon dioxide molecule has two carbons in it. So we lose two carbons as carbon dioxide. We um, reduce, uh, or we're adding our hydrogen or our electron to um, NAD to form NADH three times. Okay, we also are going to be turning, in this process, turning ADP um, into ATP. Okay, we're making one ATP in this process. And we're taking our FAD and converting it to FAD H. And since we've lost those carbons that were bound to oxaloacetate, it's now oxaloacetate again, and it can accept more um, acetyl groups in the cycle as carried by acetyl CoA. So it keeps going and going. So again, our inputs are one acetyl CoA, okay, and remember we get two acetyl CoAs per glucose molecule. Okay, so we have this is going to happen twice per glucose molecule. So one acetyl CoA. And we get three, have three NADs, one FAD, and one ATP, um, ADP enter the cycle. And we have two carbon dioxides that are leaving. That's what our acetyl group is leaving as, um, or losing carbons as carbon dioxide. Three NAD, Hs, one FAD, H2, and one ATP. So remember, every step of the reaction is mediated by an enzyme. So whenever we're changing or rearranging molecules or atoms, we're having to mediate this by an enzyme. If those enzymes are not working, this process will not work either. All right, our third step is oxidative phosphorylation. It is, the, it is the real energy payoff, okay? So far, we've only produced four ATP molecules. That's not very much per glucose molecule. We've made two via glycolysis and then two via the citric acid cycle um, because remember that cycle happened twice um, because each, um, each glucose molecule makes two pyruvates. Now, the electron shuttles, NADH and um, FADH2, are going to drop off the electrons they carry at the electron transport chain. We've built up a lot of NAD and a lot of NADH and a lot of F um, FADH2 over time. Okay, and we're going to take all of those and bring them and let them drop off their electrons at the electron transport chain. And remember, the electron transport chain is a group or a complex of proteins embedded in the folds um, of the inner, min inner mitochondrial membrane. And remember, those folds are also known as cristae. Okay, um, so those cristae. Um, those folds contain our electron transport chain. Now, electron, um, electrons are going to flow through the proteins of the electron transport chain. Okay, these little purple things represent our proteins in our electron transport chain. Um, electrons are going to be dropped off by NADH and um, FADH2, and they're going to flow through these proteins. They're passed along to increasingly electronegative members of the chain. So these proteins, as you go through the chain... Leroy Reed, please come in the front office. Leroy Reed, please come in front office. Sorry for the interruption. Um, so our um, electron transport chain proteins are increasingly ne electronegative. They're more and more and more greedy for electrons as you go through. Okay, so as the electrons are passed along, so as electrons are traveling through the chain, they lose some of their energy. Okay, and this energy is used to pump protons, or um, H+, through the electron chain from the matrix to the inner membrane space. Okay, so... Um, as our electron loses energy, okay, we can harness that energy and use it to pump hydrogens um, from this space to this space, um, from our matrix to the inner membrane space. All right, oxygen is the terminal electron acceptor. So our last 
um, electron acceptor is going to be oxygen. And when it acquires four electrons and two protons, it is converted to water, which is released as a waste product. So when our um, oxygen, which is at the very end of the electron transport chain, gets um, electrons and protons, it will be converted as water, and we're going to release water as a waste product. Okay, and pay attention right here. We have this one last protein um, that we're going to use through oxidative phosphorylation in this process, and we're going to do something with all these hydrogens that we've built up outside. All right, our final step of oxidative phosphorylation and um, aerobic cell respiration is chemiosmosis. All right, so chemi meaning some sort of chemical, and osmosis meaning something is flowing through something else. All right, so chemiosmosis is how most ATP is produced in aerobic respiration. So it's going to be making a lot of ATP. Um, the electron chain transport chain has pumped the protons into the inner membrane space from the mitochondrial matrix. So we've pumped protons into the mitochondrial matrix. And that has resulted in something called an electrochemical gradient. Let's break this down. Now, a gradient means we have one, more of something on one side and less of something on the other side. Electro suggests we have something to do with electricity, and chemical means we're dealing with um, different atoms or ions. So with an electrochemical gradient, we have more charge, that's our electro part, more charge on one side or more of a positive charge on one side of the membrane than on another. And the chemical means we have more of one um, atom on one side than, than on the other. Now, when we've pumped our protons in, into the inner mem membrane space, we have a lot of hydrogens on one side and not a lot on the other. So we have a gradient there of hydrogen atoms. Also, hydrogen atoms, um, these are charged, so they're really hydrogen ions. Um, they're protons, okay? So they're positively charged, so we have a lot of positive charge on one side and not as much positive charge on the other side. Therefore, we have an electric gradient as well, or electrochemical gradient. Um, those protons can only diffuse back into the matrix through a protein channel called ATP synthase. So these protons are very crowded here. Um, naturally, they would want to spread out um, due to diffusion, but they can't. They can only pass through one protein. Okay, and that protein that they can flow through is called ATP synthase. So this is our ATP synthase here. As protons flow through ATP synthase, so as our protons are flowing through this um, final protein, ATP synthase, this flow of energy is used to form ATP um, by adding free phosphate groups to ADP. So think of it kind of like a water wheel. Um, when water passes through the wheel, okay, uh, we take that energy from the flowing water, from gravity, um, from water being high to water being moving down um, to a lower area, and we use that energy and we can produce electricity. Um, or we can use it to power something else. So we're going to take that energy from the flow of the protons and use that energy to convert ADP to ATP. All right, because we're going to add a phosphate to ADP to make ATP. So this um, process was called chemiosmosis, and it's the final portion of oxidative phosphorylation. And if we look at our overall um, scheme of oxida oxidative phosphorylation, you'll see our inputs and our um, outputs. And you'll see that we make a lot of ATP. Our inputs per glucose... Um, we have 10 NADs that come in and um, pass through the electron transport chain and two, two fat H's that pass through the electron transport chain. And then some oxygen as well, because our oxygen is our terminal electron acceptor. And then our outputs are 32 to 34 ATP. We, there's not an exact number here. This is an estimation. So 34 to, 32 to 34 ATP are made. We make some water because we're adding our electrons and our, um, as hydrogens to our oxygen. So we have water as a waste product. And we also are losing um, electrons. We're oxidizing NAD and FAD. So we're turning it back into NAD and FAD. Ten NADs and two FADs. And that's the end of aerobic cell respiration.